Hi, I thought I'd just bring a bit of closure to those of you that were commenting on the BenQ monitor repair video. So it looks like I've now managed to fix the monitor. I've been using this all day and it's not had any problems since. So what I ended up doing was taking out the control board and the only electrolytic capacitor which I hadn't actually tested in this monitor was the one on that board. And it was reading about 3.5 ohms, uh, which is slightly high for a capacitor of that particular size. So I replaced that with a Panasonic FC and then it stopped glitching. Um, you were able to turn it on and off fine and it stopped doing the automatic adjust. Uh, but the only thing was that the DVI interface still wasn't working. So I was pretty much out of options at that point. So I basically covered the board in flux and reflowed every solder joint that was on that board that I could. And after cleaning it with some flux clean, uh, it powered up fine and now the DVI interface is working. So it's connected through DVI now and it's absolutely fine. So here we have the main controller board and this is the capacitor that I replaced on it. So this is a Panasonic FC and these are really good. They're rated for quite a long lifetime. Um, so this should be good now until the monitor reaches its end of life. Uh, the DVI interface, I was slightly suspicious of the EEPROM which is connected uh, more or less directly to some of the pins on here. Um, because that would stop the monitor being detected by the PC. But you can use some software to force an output on the DVI output and even then it wasn't doing anything. So basically I was beginning to get quite suspicious of the microcontroller here um, because the microcontroller is w what decides um, which input we switch between. So after basically reflowing all of these connections uh, with the soldering iron, so I just brushed the pins um, on all of these. Um, after doing that um, it powered up fine and now we're able to use the DVI interface. So I'm quite glad that we haven't had to throw the monitor out and it turned out that it was a relatively straightforward fix although slightly obscure and I'm still um, intrigued exactly what the problem was but I'm guessing uh, there was just a poor solder joint somewhere in this microcontroller section. So I hope that brings a bit of closure to some of you guys. And a big thanks for the comments that you all posted in the previous video. Um, so thanks for watching.